everybody, it's Zach again at NewTutora.com. I just wanted to come in and we're going to make another video and we're going to do another video about rocks. So I had so much feedback, it's me emails, and I had even a, a former coworker get on my case about you know my, my rock video because supposedly I don't know anything about geology. Okay, so, you know, what, what are my qualifications for geology? Well, you know, I have a degree in graphic arts, digital uh, uh, computer animation and digital media is where my degree's in. Um, uh, I, uh, yeah, I don't have a degree in geology, I admit that. But do, we, do I have to have a degree in, theology, or in geology to talk about rocks? Do I have to be a geologist to talk about rocks? I, I don't think I do. I mean, maybe we could go ask some of the experts. What do some of the experts say? You know, you know. hey, do I have to have a degree in geology? Here's Charles Darwin. I got his book, Origin of Species. Charles Darwin. Hey, Charles, uh, what kind of degree do you have? What's that you say? You, you, you don't have a degree. You, you don't have a degree in geology? Well, that, that can't be right. I mean, you, you wrote a whole book about rocks and animals and I mean, you, you must have a degree in biology, right? No? No. Wow. Well, what's your degree in, Mr. Darwin? What's, what's it you say? Oh, your degree is in theology. Oh, you were studying to be a pastor. Oh, so, so you're not a geologist. Oh, you're not a biologist. Well, your opinion obviously doesn't matter, and we can cast that aside. So what about, uh, I mean, if we can get rid of him, who else can we get rid of? What about Charles Lyell? Now, this is the guy, Charles Lyell, wrote the book, Principles of Geology. Surely, surely he must be a geologist, right? I mean, you wouldn't write a book, Principles of Geology, if you're not a geologist. But actually, the guy who invented the geologic column, who thought it up, him and one other guy from Britain, thought it up. They weren't geologists. Charles Lyell was a lawyer. Here's a picture of Charles Lyell. He was a lawyer. He was not a geologist. He had no degree whatsoever in any of the earth sciences, in any of the life sciences. He had nothing. All he had was a lawyer. He went to lie, I mean law school. He was a he was a lie, I mean lawyer. He was you're gonna say, oh, the creator of the geologic column. A lawyer. Okay, all right. I don't have the qualifications to talk about rocks. Please. Okay, neither do any of your mentors. Okay, so let's go on. <laughs> let's go on and talk about this. I want to tell you a quick story. Over in Union Center, of, I'm sorry, in Rapid City, uh, South Dakota, Rapid City, South Dakota, you have the School of Mines. Now, the School of Mines has a museum there, and the museum uh, has dinosaurs and rocks and fossils. And if you go on a tour of this museum in uh, Rapid City, South Dakota, School of Mines, the first place they take you on the tour is this thing right here. In the circle, it is the geologic column. The geologic column. It's in that circle right there. And they say when they go to this uh, geologic column, it's right there in the wall. It's illuminated with lights and, in, and behind glass like it's some kind of idol. And they say, this rock right here, this rock is 70 million years old. Well, I heard a story one time of about a family who went through this tour, and the little girl of the family raised her hand and said, uh, Sir, how do you know that rock is 70 million years old? And the tour guide replied, Well, we know that's 70 million years old by the, uh, by the layer it's found and by the fossils that we find inside of it. We know that that rock layer is 70 million years old because of the fossils we find inside of it. Okay, sounds good. They continue on the tour, and they come to this dinosaur that's around the other side of the corner. And the tour guide says, see this fossil? This fossil is 100 million years old. And the same little girl raises her hand and says, sir, how do you know that this fossil, this dinosaur fossil, is 100 million years old? And the tour guide replies, well, we know that that fossil is 100 million years old by the layer that we find it in. Well, wait a minute, she says. The little girl raises her hand again and says, you just told me over there that you dated the, fo the layers by the fossils, and now here, over here you're telling me you're dating the fossils by the layers. Isn't that circular reasoning? And he scratched his head and said, yeah, I guess you're right. I guess that is circular reasoning. 
after he thought about it for a moment, because yes, that's exactly what it is. It's circular reasoning. The whole geologic column is a farce. And if you're one of these geologists, supposed geologists, who 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 obviously hopefully has more qualifications than Charles Darwin does, because he doesn't have very much, or nor does Charles Lyell, the lawyer. Okay, so if you're one of these geologists who maybe actually went to school and was taught circular reasoning, you're dating the fossils by the layers, and you're dating the layers by the fossils, that is indeed circular reasoning. But don't take my word for it. Let's see what some of your experts have to say. J.E. Rourke. The intelligent layman has long suspected circular reasoning in the use of rocks to date fossils and fossils to date rocks. The geologist has never bothered to think of a good reply, feeling the explanations are not worth the trouble as long as the work brings results. Oh, so let's just not worry about the details. We'll just go ahead and publish our findings and, you know, that whole circular reasoning thing, we'll just ignore that. Because that's what they do. It's all fake. It's, you know, I have... I have, I have textbooks. I have, I have college, earth science, geology, and biology textbooks. Okay, and there's a lot of good science in those books, but there's a lot of horrible, bad science in those textbooks that have to do with uh, evolutionary thinking. And if you're one of these people who thinks that evolution and long periods of time is what brought the earth about and what brought life about, I got you got another thing coming, pal. That was a lie. It was a farce. It was a fraud. You got lied. You got ripped off. Okay? This stuff is all wrong. And, you know, but you have never were taught this. You were never shown the other side of the coin when you were in school, when you were in college. There's a whole other world out there of evidence that creationists have been trying to, you know, shout out, and people keep shouting them down. But when you look at it, they have some really good points, you know, and, and they're right. You know, you when you look at this stuff objectively and not just take it as brainwash when you got brainwashed as a college student, twenty something years old, a head full of mush, and you got indoctrinated, I mean you were brainwashed. And so now you go out and you, you tout the, the, the line. You know, and if you don't tout the line, you don't get a job in that field because they blacklist you automatically as a kook. It's circular reasoning. J. E. Rourke says it right there best. American Journal of Science. I cannot be denied that from a strictly philosophical standpoint, geologists are here arguing in a circle. The succession of organisms has been determined by a study of their remains embedded in the rocks, and the relative ages of the rocks are determined by the remains of organisms that they contain. <gasps> okay, let's keep going. Niles Eldridge, one of the biggest evolutionists out there, you know, that people that people know about. Niles Eldridge says this, Paleontologists cannot operate this way. There is no way simply to look at a fossil and see how old it is unless you know the age of the rocks it comes from. You date the fossils by the rocks. But he goes on to say, and this poses something of a problem. Yeah, I agree, Niles. It, it definitely does. If we date the rocks by their fossils, how can we then turn around and talk about patterns of evolutionary change through time in the fossil record? Well, the simple answer, Niles, is you can't. I'm sorry, but you can't. And you, you're right. You can't do that. It's, it, it, it's impossible, and it's illogical. And I tell you what, it's, it's fraudulent. It comes down to the bottom line that it's fraudulent. And uh, you people, if you've gone through the schooling and uh, you've thought all your life that the Earth took millions or billions of years to form, and these rocks, these rocks were created over long periods of time, you, you got lied to. You got, you got ripped off. You know, and you probably learned a lot of good science at your school. And uh, there's a lot of good science in my college textbooks that I keep and that I, that I use. But there's a lot of bad science as well. And so what you need to do is go back, reassess, and uh, uh, learn some of this stuff. And just take a look at the other side of the coin and see what the fuss is all about. Because there's a lot of good evidence out there. And even these guys who are... Um, who are, uh, even these guys, who, I mean, your own experts, your own experts will say the same thing. Take a look, take a look at this picture. I, this is a picture taken in the St. Louis area on Highway 270 between Manchester and Dory Ferry. This is in the St. Louis area. And um, basically what you're looking at is a layer divided by another layer. Okay, now, 
these geologists are going to tell you, these experts are going to say that the layers are laid down over long periods of time. Long periods of time laid these layers down. That's what the Bex, that's what the books say. I have the books, that's what they say. And here you have a layer divided by another layer. How is that possible? I'll tell you how it's possible. It's easily explainable once you take into account of Noah's flood. Noah's flood did that. When you take water and you put it in a jar and you put all kinds of dirt and you swirl it around and you let it sit, it'll settle into layers and some of those layers will divide other layers because there, some layers are being laid on top while other layers that's of that same layer will be laid on bottom. If you layer, put a layer on top of one another over time, you won't get formations like this that you're seeing right here on your screen. This does not occur by laying down layers over long periods of time. This occurred in a flood. This occur occurred in a giant flood. You have one layer separating and ending inside of another layer. That just doesn't happen according to the textbooks. Now, in the textbooks, you have different layers that, that separate two layers, two different layers, like this picture right here. But what ha what's happening in the photo is this right here. And that does not happen in the textbooks because the textbooks are wrong. <laughs> the textbooks say these were laid down over long periods of time, and I'm telling you that they weren't. These were all laid down in a massive, giant flood. This, look at this, look at this, uh, look at this quote. In the years after Darwin, his advocates hoped to find predictable progressions. In general, these have not been found. Yet the optimism has died hard, and some pure fantasy has crept into textbooks. This is David M. Ropp, University of Chicago paleontologist. How are you going to argue with the guy? You know, some pure fantasy has crept in the textbooks. I'm telling you, you guys got ripped off. You went to college and you got ripped off. What about this guy? Look what he says. Colin Patterson, the British Museum of Natural History. History. No other entity on the planet has more has a bigger collection of fossils and rocks than the British Museum of Natural History. And let's look at what Colin Patterson, who works for the who used to work, he's about dead now. I think he died. The British Museum of Natural History. Look, look what he said. I fully agree with your comments. He's writing to somebody who's asking about the the, the uh, who read his book and was asking why that you didn't show any examples of missing links in your book. Patterson replied, "I fully agree with your comments about the lack of evolutionary transitions in my book. If I knew of any fossil or living, I certainly would have included them. I will lay it on the line. There is not one such fossil." I rest my case. You got ripped off. You got ripped off. It's as simple as that. So, uh, for everybody else out there, um, I hope maybe we'll do some more creation videos. I have a whole series of slides and, and material that I use for my classes when I teach creation science. So, maybe we'll do some more creation science videos. Uh, I'd like to do another one coming up on uh, some ice cores and some things like that, that that I think will be really interesting to people. So, maybe we'll get into that uh, coming up in the next couple of weeks. But, um, anyway, subscribe to my YouTube channel if you haven't already. If you've seen the video, subscribe, and I'll keep you up to date on upcoming videos. We do all kinds of videos, uh, not just about creation, but all kinds of stuff. So, I'll talk to you later. Uh, go home, read your Bible. Thanks.